Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger, and in this video, we will evaluate the evidence for the origin of snakes. There are two competing theories on the origin of snakes. One based largely on the molecular evidence that argues that snakes are most closely related to primitive squamata within the iguania, closely related to iguanid lizards and chameleons. The other theory, based on the amount of craniokinesis in the skulls of both snakes and varanid lizards, have the origin of snakes from the group that includes monitor lizards and the Komodo dragon. This is sometimes referred to as the iguana versus the ganeomorpha ancestry for snakes. Within the angulomorpha, are the mosasaurs. These are giant marine lizards which are closely related to the modern Komodo dragon. The advocates of the Aganomorpha origin for snakes suggest that snakes may have arose from an aquatic ancestry, while the iguana are the all terrestrial or arboreal lizards, suggesting that snakes may have arose from a terrestrial or even subterranean ancestry. Over the last 20 years, the fossil record of Mesozoic snakes has been growing, particularly from discoveries in the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods, when we start to see the first snake fossils. Three snake fossils from the late Cretaceous Cenomanian age of the Middle East exhibit hind limbs and hence have been embroiled in snake origin discussion. Pachyrhychus from Israel has miniature hind limbs articulating with a rudimentary pelvic girdle, missing foot bones. It lacks a forelimb and pectoral girdle and exhibits loosely articulating upper jaw and a inner mandibular joint, placing it as an early true snake. Hassiophis, first described in the year 2000, displays the most completely preserved hind limbs. These hind limbs include remnants of at least four toes, and this early snake shows adaptations associated with the aquatic lifestyle, such as a thickening ribs and vertebrae, plus a laterally compressed tail for swimming. Pod Ophis from Lebanon is another limbed early snake with a well-preserved hind limb positioned near the rear of its long snake body. All three of these fossils have hind limbs and are believed to be aquatic animals swimming in the water. Another late Cretaceous early snake was living in North America and is only known from isolated vertebrae and jaws, called Coniophis. Unfortunately, nothing's known whether it had limbs or not. In South America, the record of fossil snakes from the Cretaceous is much better were several good specimens of a rather large, modern-looking snake called Dionysia. This early snake from the late Cretaceous indicates that snakes were also large and terrestrial during the Cretaceous. The recently described Tetrapodophius from the early Cretaceous of South America is the first fossil snake that exhibits all four limbs. The forearm includes the humerus, radius, and ulna, with four, possibly five fingers, and hind legs with five toes, nested in a weakly ossified pelvis. These fossils indicate that it was the forelimbs that snakes lost first. The fact that early fossil snakes were known from the Middle East, North America, and South America, suggested that the fossil record likely extended even deeper in time, and paleontologists began to look at more fragmentary fossils to see if they had been any fossils uh, misidentified as lizards rather than snakes, particularly fragmentary skulls, jaws, and vertebrae in earlier time periods. And indeed, new Jurassic fossil snakes began to be described just last year from Colorado, England, and Portugal. While we don't know if these Jurassic snakes had legs or not, they do extend the fossil record back to the Jurassic, when lizards, the squamata, were also diversifying. Hence, there is likely a fossil record of additional Jurassic snakes just awaiting discovery. One thing to keep an eye out 
on is how to recognize a snake vertebra when it's isolated from its body. Snakes have a large ball and socket centrum, which is similar to an angiomorpha lizard vertebrae. The vertebrae also feature two other articular joints between the pre and post zygopophyses of the bone, allowing mobility along the back and an attachment for strong muscles, as well as a pair of wedge-shaped processes called the anterior zygosphene, which fits into the posterior zygatrium uh, concavity, just below the base of the neural spine. Thus, the vertebra of snake articulate with each other by these joints in addition to the ball and socket joint on the centrum. Now, despite this, it's actually still rather difficult to distinguish an isolated vertebrae as belonging to a snake or a lizard. All right, you should be able to discuss both hypotheses of the origin of snakes, either from a terrestrial ancestor near the iguanid clade of lizards, or aquatic ancestor near the Angiomorpha clade of lizards. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin slash burger.org. Links are found in the description below.